of course, are celebrating MLK Day today with a very special guest whose work embodies this National Day of Service. I am so excited and honored to be with my friend Elizabeth Omalami. She is the CEO of Hosea Helps, and she is here to talk about all the wonderful things that are happening on this cold and chilly day, but we all have warm hearts yeah. honoring his legacy. How are you? Wonderful, it's always good it's to be with you. Always so great to see you. And I, you know, you do so much here in the community. We are so grateful, but of course it started with your father, uh, Hosea Williams, who worked so closely with Dr. King. Um, how did that relationship um, at an, such an early age for you, how did that affect and impact you, especially looking back now? Well, you know, uh, they say that the personality of a child is formed by the time they get seven, I think yes. they say, or eight. And by that time, I, all I'd seen was marching, wonderful preaching, fabulous singing, and jail. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, and that, that. right, oh I, boy. I was marching, I had gone to jail, twice by the time I was nine. Oh my God. So I was in my mother's arms, actually the first time in Savannah, Georgia, we were marching for the integration of the Woolworths uh, uh, there in Savannah. So I grew up by that time thinking there was a purpose in life. Yes. And that purpose is to make sure that everyone has equal opportunity and that you have fight for your rights. I think as a little girl, I didn't really know what rights were, right. but I knew there was Something called rights that you yeah. had to fight for it. Yes, <laughs> so, that we all deserve. Right, yes, that right. everybody should get. Absolutely, and uh, it's so important, obviously, to remember his legacy. But even, especially, I should say, in these times as well. Mm -hmm. um, talk about you know why that is so important. Um, it seems like we we still see the same struggles, uh, the same fighting, um, and still trying to make a difference for all of those who, who feel like they have been left behind. Yes, I think especially when we look at children at the border in jail, that's jail to me. Right. Or when we're afraid that someone will come and shoot a school, that is uh, the kind of uh, reaction that comes from ignorance, from hate, and from racism. And when Dr. King said that no man is free until we are all free, what he meant was that if they shoot up a school in you know, Rhode Island and there's nobody you know there, it doesn't matter. Right. They are human beings. Sure. So we all have a part to play, especially I'll say white folks, okay? Because white folks have got to speak out the reason that they are important is because when black folks speak out, they say, oh yeah, there they are again, complaining about the same old thing. But you had many white people give yeah. their lives. Viola Luizzo, she was shot in the head. Priest James Reeb, he was beat to death with a baseball bat. I grew up knowing these white people that gave their lives, Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner. So it was never a black against white right. thing with me. It was always a, a character. So you cannot tell the character of a person by the color of their skin. And that goes for Amen. every color. So I grew up knowing that and I'm still fighting that fight to teach young people what good character is, what respect is. Yeah. Uh, amen. And what does this day mean to you specifically? It, it means that uh, I grew up in an unusual way that I have to begin to post-traumatic stress syndrome. All the children of the Civil Rights Movement suffer with that because we grew up as if we were in a war. Yeah. I got to suck that in. As they say, put on your big yes. girl panties yes. and go back to work. Yeah. You know, we have thousands of people that need to be fed. Uh, people are getting displaced from their homes because of the lack of affordable housing. The entry-level jobs are disappearing because of a lot. Technology is doing right, a lot of the work of our, yeah, that people used exactly. to do, and it's estimated that 40% of the current jobs will disappear in the next 10 years. So I've got a great uh, um, task ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Jose Feed the Hungry is where I work, and it's the organization that I run. And what we see now is people who have good jobs that don't uh, have food or that aren't able oh, to exactly. care. Exactly, and and. and 
I felt like it, it, that started even with the recession where you saw yes. people who you would, whatever you think, normally not be, be in, in that dire line. need, but, but that, that is the reality and that hasn't changed. And when you talk about the work that you've been doing, first of all, how many years has it been for Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless? Um, and talk about this continued work um, that you're following in your father's yes. footsteps. Well, the first Thanksgiving dinner was in 1970, and that was primarily men and homeless people. So fast forward from then to 2000, when Hosea Williams and Juanita Williams both passed away in the same year, they were the impetus. Bar Martin Luther King was my dad's boss. Yeah. So he, they were uh, inspired by that movement. But then now today, what I'm getting calls from people who uh, never thought they'd be in a food line, never thought they'd right. need rent assistance. And if we don't come together and uh, serve people in need, then uh, I think our country will suffer because of this and we'll be in more of a crisis than we are right now. Right, and there's a way to help, especially today, especially if you have the day off. This is what it's meant to yes, be, yes. a day of service, a day to remember. And tell us what's going on so anyone who's watching can come out. Well, we had 200 federal employees come in the last two days to get food. And wow. that just blessed my heart right. that we were able to do something for them. So if you're at home and you want to do something, of course, you can sponsor a food box for 38 bucks. You can feed a family of four for two weeks. Just go to our website, number four, H-O-S-E-A dot O-R-G, and you can sponsor a food bank for, uh, box, box for yeah. one of these uh, families. Also, just look around your own neighborhood. I bet you can find a senior citizen that needs help. Yes. You can find some children maybe without two parents that that one parent that has two jobs and three kids can help. You can help them. There's always something you can do. And if you are lonely and depressed, the best way to get out of that is to serve somebody yes. else because then you start thinking about others. Exactly. And Dr. King, that was one of his main messages is that we must serve others and what it is it helps you more than you could ever help Aww, anybody else. It's so and, true. And Jose Feed the Hungry, we, we utilize 9,000 volunteers a year. We especially need volunteers right now okay. because on January 23rd, we will be having our MLK Day celebration. We don't have enough people to help prep the food. Right now you do not. We do not. Okay, can we they sign up on the website? On the website. Good. We have 72 spaces left. We also will be hearing um, oral histories on January 23rd, that's this Wednesday, right. Georgia International Convention Center, okay. 10 to 4. 10 to 4, but if you want to volunteer, we they need have you. So, dozens of spots that yes. they need filled. Yes. Go to the website, which is forhosea.org. Thank you so much. It wouldn't be such Look, an important day without seeing you. Atlanta uh, and Company is always there for the community, oh. always there for Jose Feed the Hungry. Well, we so appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please don't forget, we'll make sure that Trent not only uh, posts how you can help, but posts the event on the 23rd once again so you could come out. All right, and coming up, are you struggling with your New Year's resolutions? We've got the solution just for you. After the break, we're going to give you tools to create healthy habits and make better decisions. Won't that be nice? Great. All right, that's coming up.